Welcome, this is D'Angelo and Data here to discuss our most recent buddy read of the book Dear Edward by Anne Napolitano. Anne Napolitano. This book is a literary fiction about a 12 year old boy who is the sole survivor of a plane crash. And the book really takes place in two timelines. Um, one timeline takes you know place entirely on that fated crash, and the other one moves forward with his life and how he. Um, learns to adapt after losing his family and just moving on with life, etc. So, Deja, you can get us started with your overall impressions and how you felt about the book. I like that it switched between the plane crash timeline and the timeline of Edward, who is the main character. Um, I liked that she broke up the chapters in a way where you were able to tell from the title of the chapter whether you were on the plane still or you were now in present day with Edward. Um, it was interesting that she brought in a lot of backstory of the people that were on the plane because that leads into some, I guess, dramatic irony that happened later on in the book. Overall, I definitely feel like it was a good read. It kept me on the edge of my seat. In the first chapter or two, I was kind of like, okay, typical YA novel. But then by the time we got into it, it was like, okay, I'm ready, I'm reading. And I actually read ahead of our timeline yeah. because it was so good. So definitely a book. It's, it's a combination of like feel good and like heartfelt story. Mm -hmm. So it, it brings you in, mm -hmm. but it's not so traumatic or so... Um, like devastating that it's a hard read so it was a good read i definitely agree with that too at first i was wondering like why you know the author was continuously taking us back to the plane crash but then you realize that hey the people on these plane crashes like had entire lives that were fleshed out they had entire backstories and without giving without going into spoilers or anything a lot of what was going on with them on the plane um edward late, later interacts with and, and finds out information about them so both of them, both timelines kind of get interacted, um, interactive with each other. So, so we're going to get into some discussion questions about Dear Edward that um, we prepared beforehand. So, Deja? In what ways can reading a tragic book actually help us to find joy in our daily lives? Hmm. Well, with this particular book right here, it's, I, I would describe it as a very empathetic book because it, it does... Um, really tug at the heartstrings when you you know you you know that the people in this plane crash are, are doomed uh, for lack of a better term and you 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 realize that hey these people have hopes and aspirations but they they don't know that it's going to be cut off you know in a very very short space of time but you know they're hopeful about the future they have their regrets on the plane and in the present timeline dealing with with edward like he has to go through an entire um, reinvention i think in one part of the book that says that hey you know, he's no, he's not a child, but he's not an adult either. He's like something else after that experience. How about you? I think it definitely doesn't make you appreciate family. It's very centric on the family and I like, you know, especially as a teenager, you're not always thinking about how much you appreciate your parents or your siblings that you don't really get along with. And it definitely in the book, he connected with his brother a lot before and after the crash. And so it kind of shows you, like, you know, your siblings, your parents will always hold a special place, even in those teenage years when you're not so close with your family or you're annoyed by them. Uh, it definitely was, like, an eye-opener to, like, hey, you never know when your last moment with someone is, you know? It wasn't even just Edward. It was also other people on the plane who had significant others they were estranged with or that they were in situations that they couldn't wait to tell them about until they got off the plane and at the end of the day, they didn't get the opportunity to. So it's definitely like a seize the moment, tell people you love them, enjoy your life with your loved ones while you could kind of read. Absolutely. Okay, so the second question is that, do you normally interact with people on a flight? Has this book change the way that you would interact with your fellow passengers in the future um that's interesting i am a big traveler and so i have had a combination of things i've had flights where i traveled with friends and family so of course we're interacting on the flight i've had lots of flights where i've traveled alone and so um there's been opportunities where hey my seatmate is actually pretty cool and we get into a conversation and we exchange instagrams later you know or i'm in a row with people who don't even speak english we just um exchange pleasantries but it is interesting right because it's an intimate situation sometimes your arms are touching sometimes you're like mm -hmm. you know really close to the other person and you know you may spend 
six hours together on a plane and not know anything about them but it in edward's case you know it would have been interesting if he did learn more about these people mm -hmm. and people who we were curious about he learned more about later like the um the former military guy who mm -hmm. was on the plane yeah yeah exactly mm -hmm. how about you um i'm known for you know being a, a quote-unquote friendly person um so yeah I've, I've you know made a lot of interactions with with people like fellow travelers um, as I was going from you know place to place etc but I think definitely moving forward this book is going to and not just on airplanes too um, just in life you know it, it, it reinforces that entire point of it because it also switches um, point of view characters on for the airplane portions of it so uh, some of it um, is is in the point of view of um, the mother or well, from the perspective of the mother um, some of the other passengers the military guy like you said and you realize that all of these people, every single person that you interact with, you know, they have an entire life, an entire history that you have no idea what's going on. So it definitely, I think, I feel like it would impact my um, interaction with just people in general um, moving forward. So our next question is, how do you feel reading this book knowing that everyone on the plane is going to die except for Edward? Honestly, at first it was pretty jarring and a bit sad. Because, you know, like, people, they, they're talking about their plans. They're talking about, oh, you know, I hope this guy is going to, you know, propose to me, you know, when I land and everything. And you know, like, no, that's, that's not going to happen. You know, people make resolutions to be better people. And you're like, yeah, that's, that's not going to happen. It's, it's, it really, really reinforces that idea that we really have to count our days and make each moment count like you know the future we're always talking about the future we're gonna do this in the future we're gonna go do that in the future but you know you never know yeah i agree 100 percent. that definitely brought out some empathy for sure because you know there are people on the plane who's looking to start a new life looking at people playing running away from the life they already have and you're hopeful you're like oh she's gonna move to so-and-so and it's gonna be so great she's gonna get proposed to by her boyfriend and that's gonna be so great and this is gonna be good and that's gonna be good and then you know, it's funny because we flash forward to Edward in present day by himself before we actually experience the plane crash. So at the end of the day, you're looking to see, you know, how do we get from here to here? And when we actually got there, it was, it was like you say, it was jarring because it was like, oh, wow, like this is actually what happened to the passengers. And you were already hopeful for this and hopeful for that. And you already built some attachment. So it, it did bring out a lot of empathy for sure. So the next question is, which of the characters on the plane did you identify with most other than Edward and why? Honestly, I feel as if, I can't remember the name of the character, but it's kind of like the, the old guy with all the regrets. Ah, uh, yes, like, yes. This is one yes. character, like he was, it was two rich guys on the on the plane. Right. And one was like a, 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 a old school millionaire guy who was divorced with a bunch of wives. And the other guy's like the new hot guy, you know, the new hot rich yeah, yeah it was like a was symbolism like, yeah, for like sure. symbol. and, and that guy actually recognized him he's like hey you came to my college and i say you 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 delivered this speech changed my life you know he like he kind of hero worshiped that guy right. so both of them were, were like on opposite ends of the you know success spectrum one guy who's like really you know just getting into his you know into his major success and this other guy is like you know looking back at, at his major lives but that particular guy i don't know maybe i'm just a bit um morbid but it's like <laughs> you know it's just that whole looking back and you know wishing you could have done things better yeah yeah how about you i think ironically um based on my life that i identified with the mother of edward a mm. lot right because i'm kind of person that usually busy mm -hmm. doesn't always have the time for like family mm -hmm. and things along those lines and it's like she's in this position where she would have loved like you know part of her wanted to be in the back of the plane with her family mm. part of her wanted to be there doing what she's doing though mm. she that's what she chose to do right to be in first class alone and essentially by the when she realized that hey something is wrong we're getting some turbulence whatever she now wants to be with her family right and so sometimes that happened we create these uh families we have our loved ones we're so busy working or socializing or traveling that we don't spend enough time with them and then we turn around and realize hey we really should have taking the time to prioritize them when we could have that is something all right so a big a major part of the of the book and the reason why it's called dear edward is that because a lot of the family of the 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 victims of the plane they start writing to edward as um 
as the sole survivor, you know, and they would like say, hey, you know, my daughter was on this plane. She wanted to do this, you know, do this in her memory, etc. So our next question is, it was it fair? Because remember, Edward was 12 at the time. And I think he was maybe 14 when he started getting those letters. Um, was it fair for adults to write to Edward um, and make those requests? So I don't think so. Um, in all honesty, mm -hmm. a lot of the requests, some of the requests were vague, enjoy your life, do the things that you uh, want to do type of thing. And then some of the requests were very specific, right? And so it's not fair for you to ask, you know, this person to live vicariously to live vicariously to this person mm -hmm. nobody like yes it's unfortunate that your daughter was a violinist and she didn't get to play the violin in paris or whatever the case was right but that doesn't mean you need to pressure this child to now mm -hmm. go on and be a violinist right so i think some of the things were impractical some mm -hmm. of the things were good mm -hmm. life advice mm -hmm. so i would say in situations where you know we were asking you to basically live the life that the, the victim didn't get to live yeah. that was really unfair and especially for a 14 year old right they're already mm -hmm. having multiple identity crisis because they're mm -hmm. already a teenager trying to find themselves they're already now without family they're already now in a weird home situation where they, he was living with his um aunt mm -hmm. so for you to now put extra pressure on this poor 14 year old was a lot but i think these people were speaking from you know a place of hurt mm -hmm. and they weren't really being cognizant of how that would affect now this teenage boy mm -hmm. absolutely yeah i i think it was really inappropriate too but it was also very interesting because you know, without going into spoilers again, you know, Edward kind of, you know, takes that and it, it helps him, you know, toward, you know, as he's approaching adulthood, you know, it, it gives him a new sense of identity and a new sense of purpose um, in the book. And some of the requests are pretty interesting because a few of them actually come and meet him in right. person. And, you know, some in like planned circumstances, some in unplanned circumstances. Yeah. And it was interesting. Yeah. yeah. He actually gets to meet some of those people. But the most interesting one to me was the one where um, it, was a, it was a parent who was telling, hey, just tell my kids, hey, you saw their mom and they talked about you, etc. And it was, it, it, and that's the one that he really wanted to prioritize because it seemed like he wanted to prioritize the older people and the younger people. Yeah. So it gave him, it was inappropriate, but it gave him a way to, um, to cope with what right. he was going to. Right. So I right. think it was cathartic for him. Right, right. All right, so we're gonna go into our final impression. So what would you rate this book on, on a scale from one to five, five being the highest, and tell us what moment from the book um, stuck with you the longest? Will stuck with, stick with you the longest? So I would rate this a 4.5. Mm -hmm. um, it's definitely up with some of my top books. Mm -hmm. It's probably one of the books I read most quickly mm. in my everyday life. I'm a quick reader when I travel, like I'm on buses and trains and stuff like that. But when it comes to my everyday life and I'm busy, it's not as often that I would read a book in like two weeks flat mm -hmm. um, like that. Um, the moment that stuck with me the most... Hmm... This may be seem like a, a strange moment, um, but in at one point, one of the boyfriend of one of the victims mm -hmm. comes and presents what his plan was for when mm, the plane yeah, landed. Right yeah. now, it may seem like that's not that significant, but my perception is that the girlfriend was actually being a little delusional. I thought, you know, he's not gonna come and propose, is he? And, you know, you're just saying that and whatever, whatever, and you kind of whatever, but the fact that he actually came and he was gonna propose and everything like that, kind of like, you know, brought a romantic side into it and kind of put a conclusiveness to that thought in my mind because I didn't know, was she being delusional? Was it really gonna happen? And then it kind of made another sad moment again because it's, you know, there's more to that story that if you read the book, you'll definitely see. But it kind of shows that, hey, you know what? That really could have been a good love story at the end of the day. And it's so unfortunate how it had to end, you know? Yeah, honestly, that, that moment, which you described as the exact one I was I was going to pick. Because oh. that, that kind of tuck, tugged at my heartstring. I was like, oh, yeah. Damn. I was like, that was a whole, like, love story that just was cut short so tragically. Yeah. And, you know, I, 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 I give this book a four, which is, I don't give um, half ratings. Like, I only give, like, integer ratings. But a four rating is... Uh, a very very good reading uh, a very good read on my scale that means i highly recommend it and this book right here compared to we also read her, la her well not her last book because this came out before that but the book um, her most recent work um hello beautiful right um, which right. is also uh, a really good read that i think both of us would recommend and what i like about this author is her 
typical way of you know weaving emotional situations and making them very human and very humanizing characters and really getting you as the reader to empathize with you know different situations that you may have may have not may or may not have found yourself in in real life so that particular scenario is like you know hey this one character is having complete anxiety like you said hey you know we're cynical as readers we think oh yeah you know that's not gonna you know that's not gonna pan out she's gonna land and get embarrassed but then he's like hey the dude literally had the ring way. it felt like it was going to be like unrequited love and like i said if you read the book you will see there's other dimensions to it as yeah. well and then you think for him like no like i really wanted that too and it's like oh man like it would have been great if she did land on the plane and it did have a proposal but yeah that, yeah. that, 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 that added a bunch of emotional weight to it like that part mm -hmm. that part honestly that, that, that almost got to me yeah. yeah yeah so yeah thank you for watching our uh recap of our buddy read of Dear Edward, we're definitely going to be doing some other buddy reads in the future. If you, you know, like this video, just let us know. Um, thank you, Deja, for doing this with me. Of course. All right, take care. Bye.